Hello. Hi. How are we all doing today? Oh gosh, gosh look at how's, how's everybody here. else. I am always durably, unreasonably mellow. It's great to see you, Jess, and it's great to see everyone in the chat. Hello, welcome. Um, thank you for joining us. If you're joining for the first time, um, okay. hi. Yeah, we're doing a free bootcamp for learning uh, HTML and CSS. We're also going to be doing a free JavaScript bootcamp in February. Um, don't miss that. I'll drop some links in just a second. But uh, oh, thank you so much, Jess. Um, yeah, be sure to join in. If you're joining in and you're like, oh, gosh, I want to catch all of this, don't worry. Everything is recorded and stored on YouTube. Um, let me get you the link for that. So if you go to oh, youtube.com forward slash at bad website club. There you'll find all the recordings for these boot camps as well as other guest sessions, which are really cool. Um we should get I I should make a playlist for those. But uh yeah um and by joining in you're agreeing to follow our code of conduct. So if you go to bit.ly forward slash bwc dash coc you can read it in full there. Um, you, you are already expected to conform with that and so if you find anything out of sorts please let us know. Um, if you want to check out all things like uh, schedule and links to chatting on Discord or on the forum, let me grab you that link. You can get that. It is a very unsurprising link. And it also doesn't lie. So we, the <laughs> Bad Website Club is actually a bad website. So we did just HTML. So a very, very basic website. And it's a big to-do in our hearts. We said, oh, we're going to fix that later. We'll get to it. Wait, it Later is a long time. And finally, if you want to join us on Discord, here's the link for that. And I think that's all of the links. That's all of the housekeeping. Let's. Amazing. So today, what, we doing what today? we're doing is called pair programming, isn't it? Yes. And on Friday, everybody had to listen to me talk about philosophy because we had our first project. Ooh. And I try not to do too much of the project for people. Amazing. Um, so how about I type and you drive? And I'm exceptionally excited because wow. I get to be right about something, or I get to talk more about philosophy. Um, Amazing. And because I'm driving and because I'm mean, I've skipped the first two steps. So y'all can do them on your own. Yep. Fantastic. So here's what we're going to be doing today. This is going to be the uh, learn the CSS box model by doing a Rothko painting uh, set of exercises. And it's just said we skipped the the first couple ones because they cover all of the boilerplate we've done a couple times. You know, the setting up the doc type, HTML tag, and body tag. And this is where we start skipping a little bit to make sure we can cover as much as possible today. So yeah, today we're starting at step three. And we're going to be doing the CSS box model. And I remember, and just you remember, uh, I, I remember because you you mentioned this a couple of times, everything in HTML is kind of a rectangle. So even so when something doesn't look like a rectangle, we can think about all of our elements as rectangles. Yep. Uh, text is a rectangle. An image is a rectangle, even when it's a circle. I yep. promise, 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 we can conceptualize all of these elements on our HTML as rectangles and the CSS box model. Mm. Yeah. And oh, well, I mean, let's let's take a look at what we have here. Because what yeah. we have here um, in our code is an image with a source linking to an image that's provided by Free Code Camp that is going to be explaining to us over the next couple of steps what the box model is. This first one here, the blue area, we see that covers the content of an element in HTML. So here, this content could literally be text that says content, mm -hmm. but there's a rectangle that encompasses the element, the height and the width of that yes. content. Makes up a this. part of that box. Yeah. So let's change that to, we're going to be changing that to diagram two okay. now. And you're going to see, right. oh, it's now it's adding a couple. So, and you're going to be seeing this box a lot of the time in your dev tools, which we will cover later on. But yeah, so for now we, sorry. Padding is the amount uh -huh. of space inside your element. Yeah, I love your metaphor, Jess, of calling it bubble wrap. I definitely stole that from somebody else. I so love it. If you've got an element, the padding is the 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 comfortable space it asks for, the comfortable space it gets inside. Is that true? Inside the element. That's correct. So if if we put any elements inside of our element, they're going to be spaced along with that padding. Padding. Whereas we're going to talk about. I bet if we go on. 
Oh, well, first let's we see our border here as well. So that's the tracing around the element. So tracing even is a though, really good word. Even though our content is just this little blue rectangle, the padding yeah. means that the border's offset. And I bet we're going to yeah. see what this yellow thing is doing in a second. I'm excited. Ah, uh, so now we see where I've stole uh, the bubble wrap. Ah, cool, cool. So we can think of the border like the cardboard box. Your, your item was shipped in. That's really good. Yeah, it's the cardboard itself. It can be thick. It can be different colored. Yeah, so we're going to change that two to a three now. Okay, let's check out what it wants us to learn next. I bet that's going to be the space outside of our box, which is the margin. Margin. And margin feels a little bit easier to describe because when yeah. we talk about all of y'all grew up, like a lot of you are digital natives, some of you are, are grown like me, um, mm -hmm. adjusting the margins in your Google Docs or your Microsoft Words or your Office Libras, if you're, if you're, if you're my kind of nerd. Um, and we're used to adjusting the margins so that that maybe we get we we have to write just a little tiny bit less in our in our school reports. So think of padding as the bubble wrap inside your element, and the margin as that extra space outside. Mm. So each element. So if I if I'm I'm going to probably be confusing when I say this, and I apologize in advance. The way we do layout of different elements in HTML is we can either set this margin or padding, and we just need to be consistent and understand what we're doing with it. I'm going to say something even more cursed. Ooh. Sometimes you can get the same visual effect by changing the margin or changing the padding. Ooh. And you made a really good point that if you're adjusting elements based on margin, keep it margin. So, yeah. So this is fantastic because you're going to hit this as a problem, maybe in a month, maybe in two months, maybe in six months. And the worst thing is you're going to hear this in my voice. Uh, so please enjoy the gently cursed future. <laughs> so this is saying we've explained that you've got your content. The padding yeah. is the bubble wrap around it. The border is a like a frame you can put around it. And then a margin yeah. is the space it demands on the outside. Ooh. Yeah, I like that. That's helpful. Let's get rid of it's it. Your... Cool. No more. <gasps> we won't be working with that anymore. And now let's go, go, go. So oh. now, oh, yeah, sorry. So um, you're going to see this pop up come up. Um, free Code Camp is, of course, free. And if you can donate, that's wonderful. We're going to be clicking on um, Ask Me. But. Don't you spend only, money you don't have. I was going to say, like, only if you can. <laughs> so um, we're going to get div inside our body. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we're going to... What's a div? A div? Ooh. So we've seen a couple of these semantic elements. I would say a div is less of a semantic element, and it's really just a rectangle, a container, something to put yeah. in. Put a stuff rectangle. In. A rectangle, you say? Yeah. In this case, we're going to give it a class called Canvas. We so that okay. probably tells us I'm feeling pretty good. Folks, if you have any questions, please feel free to drop them in. This is what we're doing it live for. Ah, uh, look at this. So we're going to use these divs to kind of paint and color and move. But mm -hmm. right now, our CSS doesn't know our HTML. But gotcha. ha, 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 this is stuff we've done last week. So I'm going to skip it. So. That just mysteriously Ooh. happened, by which I mean mysteriously happened. I'm going to let y'all do this just because it, it's not super new information. And we're going to continue to skip little pieces here and there just to give you more and more opportunities to say, oh, I've done this a couple of times. I can do it. Gotcha. And um, because I'm mean. Jess, can you uh, show us, please, which step you skipped to? I skipped to number eight. I'm so sorry. So I just no, went from step seven. Bit? Boop, boop. Step seven wanted us to link our CSS. Yeah. And I know in my heart that like folks who've been with us for a couple of classes, they either know how to do this or just as good, they know how to look this up. So I am unworried. I thought I would Amazing. skip to the fun parts and save them for myself because I'm I'm the worst teacher. You are wonderful. That makes a ton of sense. Thank you. So uh, we're going to be right. Oh, sorry. So. I'm excited about this because this proves my rectangle theory. 
Our div has nothing in it. It has yeah. no size, nothing. But oh, do we have a card? Do we have a card class as well? No, that's a that's an example code. Oh, ha ha ha! Wait, where where'd we go? Uh, we're in the HTML. Oh, we want to go back to the CSS. That's the example. So this is saying we've already got our div called Canvas confirmed. Yep. Div called Canvas. Goodbye. So here, this says there's we've got a we've got a conceptual rectangle with no size, no color, and no content. What are yep. we going to do? Hmm. So now we're going to give it some dimensions. Right, we're going to give it some width. And we're what do you think it's width. going to look like when I give it some width? Oh, I think it's going to be invisible. However, uh, that needs to be 500 pixels, not 300. Oh, is it? Yeah. Look at me just copying from what I see. You're good. You're good. This is pairing. This is why we pair. Uh, you're absolutely right. So we still. So now we have a conceptual rectangle that has a. I think if we even gave this a color, Let's we try still it. wouldn't I was see just anything. Why? Okay. Can I suggest a color? Can we make it Rebecca purple? Oh, uh, too late. I've made. We can. Pink is fine. No, 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 no. <laughs> pink is fine. Sorry, I was just getting ahead of you. I'm sorry. I'm going to ask the learners mm -hmm. why. So we've got a uh, we've got a conceptual rectangle. It doesn't have any content. Yep. It has width, mm -hmm. and it should have a background color. Why don't we see anything? Right. I'm going to let them answer because we've got a bit of a delay. And while folks do, I'm going to check my code. Amazing. Everything's nice. fine. It's a pretty good hint about why it didn't work last time. We had a height. So, uh, yep. So we're going to set that height to be 600 pixels. Still nothing. Oh, we got a comment here. There's nothing in it yet. And that's exactly right. Yeah. Because so we've no got content. width, but there's no content that gives it height. And exactly. there's no height. I think if I make this, yep, folks are 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 chiming in. No height, height's missing. Y'all are putting it much better than me. Thank you. So, and this looks huge, and that's just because five hundred pixels and six hundred pixels are quite big, aren't they? Everything's Lovely. fine. Oh, here we go. We're gonna give it a background color. Nice. Okay, Absolutely. are you one of those people who just magically knows what uh, what a hex code is? Not magically, but I mean, I can sort of look at it. So, I mean, we, we covered that last week when we did the the colored marker. So we're going to be... We're asking four, for 4D of red. That's right. So it's about half Zero of green. Red. And that's no not, blue. Oh! Yeah, so a, a little bit of red, tiny bit of green, and no blue at all. So a strong sort of vampire vibe. Oh, I like that. Yeah. I was going to say like Oki or something. Oki. Okay. okay. We're, we're very different places. Nice. So <laughs> I'm going to create a parent div for my canvas mm -hmm. div. Is that right? Yeah. So we're going to put our canvas in a frame by adding a div around that, around our canvas. And we're going to give it the class frame. So far, there's only one canvas and there's only one frame. Right. If it stays like this, I could just as easily use IDs, right? Correct. But if if we were to, say, turn this into a gallery website, oh. then we could have several paintings. I don't know if we've done border yet, but I'm going to let folk, let learners guess again. What do we think border is going to do? Oh, it looks like we've done it because... Unless yep. it's being very mean. So that's a solid border. There's no, I don't think there's commas. Uh, only functions take commas, like the RGB. Oh, yeah. So oh. we've set it to be a solid border. Black and, and color. Big, chunky border come in. Yeah, that's a 50 pixel wide border. Everything continues to be chill and easy. Amazing. This frame is much too, that's very judgmental. <laughs> uh, uh, so we're gonna set the width of the frame, okay? Ooh, interesting. Five hundred pixels. Oh wait, Jess, before you do that, wait, could you delete that for a second, please? Of course. Or like, because I wanna, I wanna see what they mean. Could you do me a favor, please? And um, I, in the in the preview, scroll over to the right. Oh. Oh look, 
See? So the frame is too wide for the, for the canvas. For the canvas. Okay. I can think of a way to do this. Uh -huh. That would be easier. Yeah. But it kind of feels like cheating. If I took this away and I added a border to the canvas itself, oh, this is one of those tricks. This is this. But we see that that takes up, that overlaps some with this. Oh, just a little bit. So here we're seeing more than one technical approach to get similar visual res uh, results. And here we're setting it to the same size. Yep. That feels okay. That looks great. Love nice one. That little green, that little green stripe. It's so reassuring. It's so affirming. Yeah. So in the frame itself, ooh, we're going to be adding padding. Right. So now we're going to have some bubble wrap inside our box, which is going to push the canvas further in. Let's give that a try. And conceptually, that's going to do it by adding the space inside frame. So frame is going to squish anything yep. inside it inside with padding. Yes. Yes. OK, cool. I genuinely forget. So this is useful. And the padding, by the way, is a shorthand that does padding left, padding right, padding top, and padding bottom all at oh, once. How do you remember what directions they go in? It's clockwise, right? So it's top, right, bottom, left. Oh gosh, somebody taught us a um, somebody taught us an abbreviation to remember it last time, and I forgot oh. it. <gasps> if anybody uh -oh. remembers the the like really handy shorthand, we did not. I even remember saying, I'm never going to forget this. This is so useful. Um, and here we are. But we see the black frame. We've got the padding where it pushed the content in. And everything's fine. So we've already got some padding. How about a margin? So we're going to give some margin to the frame. And you can see that white spacing is that is that padding inside. Yes, yeah, so we've got this. And then outside, we've got this as well. So we've got 20 pixels on the top and bottom. And then we're going to automatically set the padding based on centering it. It's trouble. Sorry, it's trouble. The, the mnemonic, TRBL. Ah. Who, who remembered that? Oh, you uh, looked it up. I looked it up. <laughs> All right, so we're inside our canvas element. Oh gosh, let's make this is lying. Do you see the lie? Hmm. We'll add a new element inside our canvas element. Then we'll give the new div the class element with the value of one. This will be your first rectangle. Ah, no, we've already got rectangles. So that worked cool. just fine. We feel really comfortable making divs. Nothing's wrong. Let's so we're gonna for our one, we're gonna set its width to 425 pixels. And if I just put 425, that's not what measurement work. does it use by default? Oh, I don't know. Is it it's pixels? pixels? It's pixels. Oh. But it's a good idea to be it, I always find it like at when in doubt, always put in those measurements. Oh, always. And do you know why? Because sometimes you'll come back later and say, Oh, did I mean that? Yeah. So one has both a width and a height, and yep. I don't see anything. This is going to seem like a gimme question. Y'all just answered this perfectly. Why don't I see anything for one? Yeah, we should, like, I don't think we should see something, but it would be good to know why. Yeah, but why not? See, yeah. I'm, I should have known that this would have given us the answer. They don't make you struggle too long. Oh, at, good. So oh, wait, wait, wait. I was going to say in the early, earlier lessons, they'll definitely make us struggle eventually. <laughs> B7, so that's quite a bit of red, a good amount of green, and a, a little bit of blue. So it's like an orangey color. Yeah. Wonderful. That looks I great. I don't know. Rothka was a famous artist who did sort of large, sweeping swatha, a lot of rectangle vibes. 
which works great with HTML. So the margin here, we're going to set a vertical. And the vertical means we're setting the top and bottom at the same time? Yes. So the, if we do just two values, it does top and bottom and then left and right. So that means, well, hold on a minute. Oh, we've had this. We had oh. this last week. Is it? So yeah, see, like, it's not 20 pixels from the top of the canvas. It's 20 pixels from the top of the body. Yeah, this is that, what is it called? Margin collapse, vertical margin collapse stuff we saw a little bit of last week. And I bet it's about to be addressed here. Yeah. And we'll but, go into a little bit more than 50% and then we'll, we'll cruelly abandon our learners. <gasps> oh, see? Um, the the top margin is pushing past the canvas and onto the frame's border, shifting the entire canvas oh. down 20 pixels. Add padding of one pixel to the canvas element to give one element something to push solid to push off of. Ah, solid. What does solid mean, mean here? Hmm. So I think solid here just means like um to give it to give it some conceptual rectangle oomph. I like that. So right now, the one diff can sort of bully its way to where it wants to sit and be a little weird. And this is a pretty common approach in CSS, isn't it? To say, okay, we're going to need a little bit of padding here mm -hmm. to define where this sits, to, to give it something to push off of. And to make it worse, I would define the box model as both a technical approach for structuring your CSS code and, and this is going to be a very me thing to say, but a philosophical approach, a mental model for 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 processing how these work. Um, I, I sell that this is philosophy a bunch, huh? I love it. And I mean, like, like we do need to think about these things that we're doing. So I think it's good to like conceptualize them in our minds as well. So we've added that padding. Oh, we'll bop onto the next challenge. Now we'll add, oh yeah. Ah, so now that we have that padding, we're actually adding a couple of pixels to our canvas. So by setting overflow to hidden, what we're gonna do is like, if it overflows the size that it's been given, just hide it off to the sides or to the oh, top and bottom. So if we push too far and it gets too big or too weird, it'll just yeah. ignore the extra bits. Yeah. I oh, I should remove the padding and instead use overflow hidden. That was an almost imperceptible shift to a little yeah, uh, but is it is that, a couple of pixels. Is that common in CSS where you'll, you'll change something, you'll change the approach, and you'll just get like a little tweak? Yep. A lot of the time, it's just those minor <laughs> pixel changes. Ooh, I want to read something here that um, Steve NB wrote. Um, all of this mar margin border padding content stuff really started clicking into place for me once I was introduced to using dev tools with the cursor and arrow selector to hover over elements and show, like a shortcut to background troubleshooting. Do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to. Are you going to race me to get the video? I'm. I am going to. Uh, I don't know about race because I might lose, but I will try. I'll let you get it. <laughs> so I'll start talking about this. Um, we Sounds had good. a fantastic friend of ours. Uh, Miguel, who gave us a talk about Firefox DevTools. And like Firefox, one of many different browsers you could use. It's it's probably our favorite, but it's because we're biased. I love um, it. And because it's quite good. I, I, I'm a privacy weirdo, so I would I would be a Firefox nerd regardless. Um, and this is showing you how DevTools work in Firefox. We can find tons of other ones for different browsers. Um, we, we just got one of our best beloved friends. To, we love all our friends. So here's so the link. Another class, another div with a class two. And I bet Ooh. imaginary internet money that we're going to make another rectangle. So I just dropped the link in there. Go check it out. It's a really good um, introduction to DevTools. And if you don't get it all yet, don't worry. You can come back to it later. This is what I love about these being recorded. Also, I don't get Dev to the full power of DevTools, and I'm a million well, and some. I am so constantly being introduced to new things about it. I'm sorry I interrupted. No, hush. What, don't hush. I've added the width to two, and this is going to feel really familiar. I bet we're going to add the height. And you know what? We can chat while we do this because our learners have just done this twice before. They're mm -hmm. chill with this. This is not going to pose a problem. So now we're going to do our background color. Oh, yeah. 
we're going to do our next background color for our, our two uh, rectangle with a lot of red, tiny Ooh. bit of green, even less blue. So it's going to be like very reddish. Yeah. Still, still, I'm, I'm going to argue still a vampire color. <laughs> Won't argue with that. What does margin auto do? Yeah, so we're going to completely center it. But if you scroll down, Jess, check it out. It's not vertically centered, only horizontally centered. That is cool. along the left and right. And you're going to, so, so if I'm making websites, I mean, who's not making websites? Um, I'm going to use margin auto like a lot, a lot, I bet, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go a little bit faster and I'm going to chat to you and not even explain these as we go because I'm mean. Mm -hmm. And what we're doing is we're just making another rectangle again, right? Yep. Our, th our three one. Learners so that... who are here, do y'all do y'all believe me yet that these are all rectangles? <laughs> I, I certainly am a believer now. <gasps> Ooh, <laughs> now we're doing a little bit of different stuff. So we're going to be using the, we're going to be styling our three, but instead of using pixels, we're going to be using the percentage uh, measurement. So this is going to be, this rectangle is going to be 91% as wide as its parent, which is the canvas. Okay. Hang on. Let me just say that again to make sure I've got it in my head. Sure. So the width of this third rectangle that we can't see yet, just because we haven't, yep. it has no height, it has no color. It's it's gonna be, always going to be as wide as 91% of the parent element it sits inside. Yep. I, I believe you. I'm just going to get this. I'm just going to get it. And so if we want to see where its parent is, we can highlight it and then look for what's one, one level up level up and that's camp you might think one level up that's two and i say well that's not it's it's not its mama that's its sister that's its mm -hmm. sibling yeah. we want the parent which it lives inside very exactly. greek mythology huh but this is fine cool. that looks in, great in a more gentle way you could say this is its parent that gives it shelter Oh, Stephen B says, asked a question here that I want to address. Is it better to stick to margin zero order or mar margin auto? I'm guessing margin auto is going to cause unexpected trouble sometimes. And that is a great question. I got to be honest. I have mostly seen the former. So like margin zero auto. So not messing around with vertical padding, uh, margin, but horizontal yeah. margin. Okay. So zero and auto is going to say... Uh, these these are saying, ha ha ha, a deal. I, this is a really good question, and I'm going to uh, hang on one thing at a time. I cannot multitask to save anyone's life. So here, margin uh, zero auto would say, hey, set the vertical um, margin to be zero explicitly, mm -hmm. and then set the horizontal margin to be auto. Okay. Yes. And then a deal. Uh, would Flexbox be a good <gasps> substitute for Margin Auto? Good news, bad news. We will definitely cover Flexbox and CSS Grid later on in the course. Um, whether or not it's a good substitute for Margin Auto depends on how good you are at, at, at Flexbox and Grid. Yep. I If I wanted to center stuff, I would reach for Flexbox first. However, we'll get there when we get there. Oh, hey, come back preview. Um, so the the answer is yes, but sometimes it's like bringing a blowtorch in when what you needed is what 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 you wanted was a uh, screwdriver. Oh, I like that. Yeah, and people are saying CSS makes margin auto automatically do margin auto zero zero auto, which is interesting. And yeah. margin auto centers the element on both x and y axis, and zero auto. Centers it horizontally, I'm pretty sure. That is indeed correct. Thank you, Ole. Okay. Oh, so you oh, colored it. I'm going to keep saying vampire colored as long as this keeps giving me vampire colors. I love it. Can I zoom out just... I cannot zoom out just one square. Uh, sorry, I was hoping to just zoom out of the preview while leaving uh, all my text nice and chunky. But that looks great. Yeah. Uh, so here it says margin auto. And do you know what? I kind of trust the nerds over... Nerds oh, in a loving way. Absolutely. Uh, over at Free Code Camp. Yeah. 
It's oh, so let's me, talk about this. Let's have you talk about this while I do it. Yeah, cool. So we're going to be ah. So we've got that the one element pushes the two element down twenty pixels. Could you do me a favor, please, Jess, and scroll up to the one element so we can confirm that in the CSS? Yeah, in the CSS. So one has a vertical margin of twenty pixels. So it, we see it pushes it. It's got twenty pixels from the top and twenty pixels from the bottom. Because margin is the space outside, so yeah. it's pushing and demanding space from its siblings. Exactly. So, like, no, like, ideally, if we keep a, a consistent layout, it's saying, please, 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 no matter what you do, the next element has to be twenty pixels below me. So, in two, I want to say, okay, so this is saying, if you've already pushing twenty pixels down. Mm -hmm. You've already you've already calculated the amount of space you want, and this is saying don't get into a situation where you say, "Oh, I'm pushing twenty pixels here, and then I'm pushing." Uh, don't get yourself in a situation where you say, "Hey, the margin on one is twenty pixels pushing down, yeah. and then the margin on two is twenty pixels um, from the top." So here you've got to kind of, if you did that, you'd have to constantly remember, oh, and here it says, if you want 20 pixels, take them from one margin setting. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, okay. So now we're going to be setting three values, the top margin, the horizontal margin, and then the bottom margin. Trouble. So exactly. But because we're not putting a fourth one, the th the second value is being treated as horizontal, so left and right. Yeah. Oh, cool. So this is saying if I'm creating a margin that pushes down from the top, yep, I should go ahead and throughout my flow stick to pushing down. Correct. Okay. So here, one pushes a margin up and down. Yep. And here, this says don't push up. We've already got. We've already got space a margin above us. Yep. Center us horizontally and push yep. down. I want to get that. So I okay. Oh, it worked. Nice. <laughs> uh, folks watching along can probably guess uh, who is bad at CSS, and it's me. Oh, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not good at CSS. Ooh. We're learning together. Blur, because Rothko, and let me get the Wikipedia for Rothko. Mark Rothko didn't just do rectangles, but did these like very natural brush stroke sweeping rectangles. Ooh. Um, oh, and they're kind of, oh. So they're, okay. they're kind of, um, actually, I can come back to this. Let's take a look. Wikipedia, who doesn't love Wikipedia? Here's Mark Rothko looking really unreasonably cool. Ugh. That is very cool. Right? We're going to come down, and I'm looking for some examples of his art. So this isn't the rect... Oh, there's... Oh, I see you rectangles. Uh, but here we're starting to see these, these like, softened shapes. And it's got a very, very uh -huh. HTML vibe, doesn't it? We see... I, I see rectangles. And these are the multi-form paintings that he's most famous for that we're, we're sort of politely copying. Nice. So oh, okay, we're back here. Blur. <laughs> okay, so our canvas is going to have a blur on it. But this, is a, oh, this is a function, right? Yeah. Do you, how do you recognize it as a function, by the way? Oh, because it's got the smooth babies. Exactly. So it, it is a function, the, not filter. Filter's a property. The value of filter is the a function called blur that takes one argument, which is by how much pixels to make that blurry. Wait, I can barely see it. I don't see it at all. So, wait, uh, dot canvas, that does look good. It looks right. Can I, can I checking your code? Oh. Yeah. Is that the filter property to blur two pixels? Ooh, now hold on. Something's wrong with the dot at the beginning. Like it's doing a little underline there. Oh, did I? Oh, that's 
reset this just to make sure that I haven't accidentally typed anything silly. I think I know what the problem is, Jess. We were already su in su writing inside the canvas. Oh, that sounds like something I would do. So we're inside canvas. Oh, I, I was declaring, I was, I was setting the rules for a club that already had rules. So I just <laughs> need the filter. Exactly. And a so, function is like a an executable bit of code. So it's a bit of code yeah. that does something. <laughs> We're, uh, we're not the only ones who did this, by the way, Jess. And Stephen B., I feel you. It happens to me oof, all the time. Oof. And and we do see, so I've, I've historically needed <sighs> quite strong glasses, and this harkens me back to my glasses wearing days. <laughs> oh, yeah, I can see it blurry now. Yeah. So we've got that blur. And so, oh, gosh, um, for, I, I guess you can't raise your hand, but metaphorically, who's going to be trying to join us for JavaScript? Um, just to, to get a sort of like, oh, I, shush, of course you're joining us for JavaScript. But folks who are in the boot camp now, who's joining us for JavaScript? Um, because this is going to be really, really useful for folks who are doing it. We're going to talk about functions a lot. And this is the first function you're going to write. Ooh. I have to write a rule for both one and two. Oh, so if we want to do it for both, we need a comma. Do we need, okay, so this needs, and we got the little wiggly error line that suggests to us we need. Oh, look at all these hands going up. I love it. Oh, good. Uh, do you know what? We're, uh, just as a sidebar, we're going to do JavaScript really differently this time. So usually oh. you teach it because you're quite good at JavaScript and you're going to go, no, no, no. I'm all right. <laughs> and today, what we're going to, today, uh, from February 8th, uh, what we're going to do is you're going to be talking and I'm going to be driving because my JavaScript isn't fabulous. And this will give me a little bit extra time. Uh, we see somebody who's not sure if you could jo join us for JavaScript. It'll all be on video. There's no pressure. It's a lot of work already with the web. And yeah. we'll keep doing this year after year. Well, um, I don't want to tempt fate, but should we all continue to exist in the same space and time? The desire is there. There we are. So we're going to increase the blur effect by one pixel. But how does how does redeclaring one pixel increase it? What do you mean? So it's we're setting blur to be one pixel. For oh one yeah. And two. How does that make them blurrier? So what we're asking for. Yeah is I'm going to say, hello, this function, I'd like to order, think, think of it as a, like an order in a restaurant. I'd like to order one pixel's worth of blurriness. Right. What's a, what, what does 10 do? Dang. Uh, oh, that is. Minus 10 do. Whoa. Still Not blurry, much. but in a different yeah. way. Oh. What if you do minus negative two, Jess? I think I, I know what's going on. Huh. Huh. <laughs> Maybe you can't unblur something. Ah, but it is it is unblur. It is a tiny bit blurrier. Like you can tell the difference. I've got a friend who this sounds like I'm name dropping and I am. I've got a friend who works on MDN. And if I can't find this on MDN, uh blur CSS. Oh, I can look it up, Jess. All right. Whenever we find something that is a little bit weird, well, I'm going to check my code first. I'm going to get credit for this first. What? Oh. Oh. That's me being goofy. Okay. Oh, nice. Syntax applies a Gaussian blur. Ooh. Oh, there's a link to Wikipedia. Okay, so the pixel is the radius. So so how much oh. space it blurs. Right, outwards. Yeah. Oh, uh, we got a question about the comma sign. Yes. Let's put this Why up. is the comma sign after the one? Oh, yeah. Let's, shall we? Let, let me come back and see the code again. Um. Uh, Oh yeah. So, do you want to answer? So, it or? oh yeah, uh, I'll let you. No, no, no. Go ahead. I can I'm sorry. Smart. So here, it's like we're making a list of all of the different classes we want to follow this rule. 
Mm-hmm. But if I took this away, it would be yeah. looking for a cl- it would only apply to yeah. objects with the class of two, which are children of objects with the class of one. Right. That is not what we want. Yeah. So if I have no comma, I'm saying one, I want to talk to your child too, or children, if you have more. It's a little yellow. Right. I'm so sorry. Whereas if I have a comma, I'm saying one, two, these are rules I want to set for both of you. Yeah. Um, I consistently forget to add the comma or when I don't want a comma, I add it. I promise it will not hurt you to try it without the comma and then be, oh, I need a comma. Uh, mm, it can only hurt your pride. And that's not, that's not real injury. <laughs> Blur. So oh gosh, heck, what am I doing? Blurrier. The class of three. Right. Oh wait, hold on. I think we're already inside three, Jess. Are we? Are, oh yes, we've got the we've got the. <sighs> so here I'm gonna set a blur. Hold no, on, that's no, a that's filter. not true. That's wrong. Sorry. I'm setting <laughs> the filter function. Yep. So I'm gonna set the filter property to the blur function. That's correct. Mm-hmm. Up two pixels. Two and that's gonna be for three. So this one's blurrier than one and two. Okay. I don't believe them. Oh, I maybe it does look a tiny bit blurry. I'm I'm very I'm very bad at noticing these things. <laughs> <laughs> so just double checking how many lessons are in this so I don't do everybody's homework for them. Oh. Will it also apply? Objects that have both classes. In this case, if it were div class and so you can't. So what you're asking is, can we have? Uh, what happens if we have an object with both div class one and div class two? Yes, it would apply to one to those class to those elements that have both classes. However, and I'm going to be a little bit annoying, and I apologize. If you want to have two classes on an object, this syntax is not going to work. What you want to do is have div class set to be one space two. I'm just going to send oh, that into the so and have one. Hang on. I'll do that here. And then I'm going to stop. Oh, wait, you've had it. I was going to go show it in the, in the thing. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no. So if I, so the commas are for CSS when I want to specify the rules apply to more than one class or ID or yeah. type selector. Correct. But if I want to add more than one class or, I, or ID, I would be no, weird an ID, to have, an ID, ID is supposed would, to be unique. It would be weird to have more than one ID. You wouldn't need that. No, you you can only have one ID. Yeah. Mm. Or you should be able to have you one should. ID. I've uh, never tried. <laughs> How did you put it again? Oh, sorry. Oh, like an ID is like a, a name badge. Yeah. Uh, or you come into a party and you say, oh, I want to talk. I only want to talk to uh, Marquis, uh, which is my worst cat's name. Um. So actually, we've gone way, way further than we should have. And we're about 70% Ooh. of the way done. Shall we hop into a QA? and a Folks, if Q&A. you have any questions. I want to make sure that, that we're not doing everybody's homework. And while we're waiting for the questions to come in, and it can be questions about this specifically, it'd be questions about CSS. I've yep. loved the questions that are a little bit weird to be like, hey, hey, what, what would happen if I did this? We're like, oh, yeah, we've got that question, don't we? Oh, oh gosh, we did have a good question and we, we blew right past it to be like, ha ha ha, we'll see you in a minute. This question's too good. So here it is from Nikita's asking, it's going to increase element space without border box property. Ooh, shall we look at the border box property? Yeah. Do you know what? I will, I will, I will let you drive for a second. Ah, uh, sure. Let me bring up my screen share. <laughs> it's just me being undeniably lazy. Wow. Uh, so let me bring up MDN real quick. So where is my screen share? Oh, Jess, sorry. Can you bring back your screen share for just a second? Yeah, yeah, just, yeah. So we can, just so we can see where we left off for the homework. Oh, heck, good point. Hmm. No, no stress? No, no, everything's fine. Everything's going to be fine. And then we'll I get love how it always sounds like a threat when I say that. So if we've <laughs> stopped at step 36, even mm-hmm. though... There's like three little steps in there we didn't do because we're terrible. Oh, Mario's asking if we could do the next one. We could talk about the next one together. Let's do it. What? 
So the rectangles are too small and they don't have the soft quality of, okay, because this, this is a different function, isn't it? Is it? Ooh, yeah, we're going to, this is the box shadow one. So what we're going to do is increase the area and soften the edges of one by setting its box shadow to be these values. Now, if I remember the box shadow, we haven't done shadows yet in CSS, so this is going to be the opportunity to learn about them. Shall we? We're not. We're not going to do it together. We're not going to do this. We're going to hop into my screen share. Oh, so we are, got... Mario. While we're looking at Nikita's question, I've got a question specifically for you. <laughs> so, um, just being mean, uh, you could log off quickly if you if you absolutely don't want to answer. What documentation should I look at? So, so let's say I've never heard of box shadow before and y'all haven't. What uh -huh. should I look up or wh what kind of resource should I look at in order to get started with, with what kind of syntax I should do? I'm going to take this away. <laughs> um, sorry to be so mean. You are wonderful. Um, I will bring my screen share in. What do we do first, box shadow or border box? Should we do box shadow real quick while we're on it? No, 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 no. We're, we're, Nikita oh. has been waiting so patiently. True. <laughs> so the box sizing CSS property allows sets that sets how the total width and height of an element is calculated. Cool. So let's take a look at a couple of these. So let's say we've got, and I bet this is looking at the child container. By default, we've got box sizing content box. With 100%, we can see that the the parent container and the child container are well contained. By going with padding, now we're seeing that with content box, if we give a border and a padding to the child container, it overflows out of the parent. But if we do box sizing border box, then it takes the border into consideration as part of the size of the child container. So check out what happens when I change it to border box, okay? Now it's contained inside. So going by your original question, it's going to increase ele element space without the border box property. Yeah, we want to set this to be border box if we want to take that border box into consideration. So great question, thank you. Shall I have cruelly and monstrously made Mario do this because I, ah. I, I refuse, I'm, I'm cheerfully lazy. And Mario's like, hey, let's look up box shadow on MDN and let's see yeah. what the syntax maybe feels like. And Mario is so, and I do wanna be really, really clear. Like I try and be really, really upfront about my biases. I really like MDN. MDN's um, great. But it's not the only documentation out there. I think it's often a really good place to start but there's a lot of other documentation. I don't mean to imply that y'all need to use this and only this. You can jump on your favorite search engine, maybe DuckDuckGo or maybe Bing, or maybe I hear there's a big one somewhere. Um, oh, Ecosa, Ecosa is quite good. You can get on your favorite search engine and search for like box shadow CSS. And that, that'll give you a bunch of options. That... Shikam, we see yours and that's a really good question. We'll get you in just a hot second. Yeah, we're going to go back to Mario's question, which is about box shadow. So that's going to be the property that we'll be setting. And what this does is it allows us to give any element a shadow. Okay, so it's not a function. I could tell it's not a function because it doesn't have the smooth braces on it. Exactly. Um, okay, cool. And that's not that important now, but conceptually it's important later on. Correct. So this has, and it looks like we can set a number of values here. 10 pixels, 5 pixels, 5 pixels red. Um, which doesn't tell us a lot about what it does, but we can see here, okay, it's a little bit, so the shadow is a little bit to the right and a little bit down. It's kind of blurry and it's red. So I would imagine if I change this color, this is what's great about MDN. If I change this to blue, we can see, uh -huh. That's I how bet if set. you change that first 10 pixels to minus 10 pixels, that it's going to throw it to the other side of the box. Right. So this is called an offset. These first two values are called an offset. So this is going to have, so the first value is the horizontal offset. Positive is to the right, negative is to the left. And the if you second, don't remember that first time, just try it yeah. one way than the other. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of choices here. Then we've got the vertical offset. Positive how is- How much up or how much down it'll give you. Correct. So positive is down, 
and negative is up. The third value is, and we're going to recognize this from the blur, this is the blur radius. So the bigger the value, the blurrier the shadow is. And look, it just sort of like exploded. I like the animation. <laughs> so yeah, the bigger oh, the number. Gosh, are we going to do CSS animation later in the, the course as well? You bet. It's going to be great. So if we set it to one, it's kind of a very, so if it's zero pixels, it's just like a straight box. Thing. It's a box. Then we've got, oh. there are other ways of doing it. For example, you can skip the blur radius. There's a whole bunch of stuff here. I don't even know what this one is, but we can look into that. Oh, I like that so much. Yeah, that's a great color. And then there's the inset shadow. Shut which is up. Stuff. So this is, and this is where stuff gets weird. So if we specify that a bulk shadow is inset, it means that the the offsets go into the uh, into the element. So if you blur this, you'll get like a a um, accessibility confounding visual blur, uh, which I I think your teachers would fuss at you if you put this on a button. Yes, like it's got to look like a button. Zero point one. Yeah, so it's very oh, I, I, I might accept that. <laughs> well, it's so a bit gentle. One more good question. I mean, yes. we've probably Sorry, got a million. No, no, no. <laughs> I just wanted to like make it make. Uh, I wanted to, to so we, uh, we've got one more good question. And then do you want to be the mean person for homework or do you want me to? Let me, I like being mean. Um, <laughs> so let's bring up Shubham's question. Why does the third div in the canvas use percent for width and height while the other divs use pixels? How do we decide between percentages and pixels? This is a fantastic question. Could I ask you a favor, Jess, and maybe bring back your screen yeah. share so that we can see it? Everything's easy. Thank you. So let's 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 review what the, where the question comes from. So like the frame is in pixels, the canvas is in questions. One and two are in pixels. But if we scroll down to three. Oh, so which, I've got oh, yeah. pixels, pixels for the size. Yeah, here we go. Yeah. For three, width and height are in percentages. So why is it done this way? Um, and I, I hate to be to give you a to give you a, a sort of like um, unhelpful answer, but this is just an example for the for the lesson. Um, so my personal recommendation is if you do pixels or um, or percentages, it's going to depend on whether you want to be extremely specific about the size of your of your rectangles, or if you want these to adapt or be responsive with the size of your viewport, which we learned about last week. So if I'm an artist and I think I want to make something that is this big and it's always this big, I yep. use a, ah, what's what's the term that's not relative? What's the opposite of relative? Absolute. Uh, ah, I use an absolute measurement like pixels. But if yep. I have a vision for how much of the viewport or how much of the parent I want mm -hmm. something to be, I'd use relative like a percentage or a rem or an m. Um, so pixels and other absolute values you yep. can't stretch them. You can't warp them. They know the shape of their own soul. Whereas <laughs> relative like ones, yep. um, you, you can stretch out your viewport. You can stretch out the parent. And it says, hey, I want to stay in proportion with this larger flow. So relative stays relative. And um, absolute has a preciseness of vision of exactly how. It, so flexible versus inflexible, really. And why we've used it. Used, um, you stood in the, this lesson is probably to start teaching about absolute and relative values. Perfectly put. Thank you. I think that's oh. all of our questions. So yeah. if I was giving homework, I'd say that people should probably like uh, go pet uh, a dog in the neighborhood. So that's not very safe. Uh, that they should they should go read comics and take a nap. Mm. But but uh, you're uh, you're giving homework today. Yeah. So tomorrow. We'll be starting with the next set of exercises, uh, next set of lessons, which is the photo gallery. <gasps> I think it's going to be grid time. We'll see. Oh, uh, yeah. You you can drive for grid. Fair. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, tomorrow we'll be doing the the 
photo gallery. So your homework will be to do everything from um, to finish off the Rothko painting lessons. But of course, these are oh, those are cute. Um, but of course, oh, like remember that this is all self-paced. You don't have to do it. If you have any questions, remember there's the Discord. I'll drop the link again. And uh, and yeah, we'll be back tomorrow at the same time. And as as said, please ask as many questions, answer as many questions as you can. Like a oh, great way to learn. People have been so nice to each other. It's I almost feel guilty world. being terrible to them, but <laughs> y'all are the best. So yeah, that's for tomorrow. Tomorrow, I said we'll start with the photo gallery. And homework is to finish off the Rothko painting exercises as much as you can. Um, and to be kind to yourself. Oh, we got one more question from Mark. Oh. So. Oh, dang. Um, I think I know this, but I'm probably wrong. Um, I will probably get it wrong too. So carry on. Please. Okay, so 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 I'll try, I'll be wrong first, and you look it up while I'm wrong. Mark, I'm 60% sure that the percentage is the percentage of the parent element, not necessarily the viewport, whereas VH and VW is the um, is V the percentage of the viewport units. Yeah. So that, that would be for is that, true? that is correct. Yeah. So that would be the size of what you can see in your screen. Uh, so that would be your browser window or your phone. Yeah. Um, so percentage is how much I want this to be sized relative to the parent element, whereas view height or view width, VHDBW, is how much we're going to to size this relative to the whole view screen that your web experience is showing up in. Beautifully put, Jess. And I was and like actually 30% sure of that. So, so No, I'm, you I'm, nailed I'm, it. It means the next time I'm really confident I'll be really wrong. I'm so excited. <laughs> oh, can I tell y'all my favorite secret about, I know, I know it's consistently goofy philosophy stuff. So this is not just about, you've, you've heard me talk about this. So it's not just my favorite secret to web dev or learning, but it's just generally in life. Mm -hmm. And is that as soon as you start getting really relaxed about being wrong, yeah, everything gets easier. Um, and this is true of web development. I did an archery class. I was so bad at it. It was so great. That's so um, cool. The, yeah, if I, if I could give everybody a gift, it's getting really laid back about being. And that's not magic. Like a lot of us grew up in households oh. where we could not be wrong. Yep. Um, so, so slowly chilling out about that just makes learning so much more humane. And it makes the way we talk to ourselves a lot softer. Um, if y'all could sort of prep because you're going to be wrong so many times with this. Yep. Uh, so like when you're wrong, okay. yeah, when you're wrong, the <gasps> just, <sighs> <sighs> you know, I, I am often wrong to this day and I've been Consistent. programming for a long time. Yep. And that oh, is you mean programming. Boy. Oh yeah, that too. <laughs> um, but yeah, like I, I always say, like it's good to get comfortable with being uncomfortable when learning things. And I think the same goes for like making mistakes. It is totally... Oh, I'd go a step further. Like if you get chilled off and uh, chilled out enough about being wrong, so, oh no, I don't know what I'm doing. Oh no, I'm stuck. 90% of that stress just, go, sorry, it sounds like I'm selling y'all a cult membership. Um, <laughs> the more chilled out you get about being wrong, especially chilled out with yourself, yep. uh, the less it can hurt you. I love also, that. if anybody's mean to you, like if anybody's picking on you for being wrong in the boot camp environments or professionally, just come get us and we'll whoop them. Yeah. Either Please. verbally or through some kind of terrible blood feud. <gasps> <sighs> Shall I let y'all go? Yeah. Have a wonderful rest of your day and take it easy. And we'll be back same time tomorrow to do some, to look at some cute cats. I'm excited. Uh, these are very cute cats. These are unreasonably cute cats. Do you know what? I might hold up a horrible cat just for, for contrast. Love it. Fab. Bye, my loves. Take care, everybody. See you tomorrow.